In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we have the feast of the body and blood of Christ. 3,000 years ago, the Lord fed the Jews in the desert when they were starving. And for the last 2,000 years, we have received the body and blood of Christ as our spiritual food. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I want to introduce to you my oldest and best friend in the priesthood, Father David Rauch, right over here. He's a native son of St. Peter Parish. He went to St. Peter's School, uh, Prep Seminary, Cardinal Glennon College Seminary, and Kendrick Theology School. We were together at those places. We met 60 years ago when I moved to St. Louis from Chicago. We met at the intersection of Big Bend and Tuxedo Street in Webster Groves waiting for the old St. Louis County Green Hornet buses at, on the Big Bend bus. We've shared much in common, especially our love for trains. We have literally traveled all over Europe on trains, the United States and Canada. And we have a love-hate relationship with Amtrak and all their faults and failings and late schedules. We both have mottos for, for Amtraks. Mine is, we never fail to disappoint you. His is, beyond these doors there is no hope. But what we most share in common is their love and dedication to the priesthood. We have been together through our years with the priesthood, supported each other with difficult pastors and assignments. They had difficult pastors back then. And great pastors and great assignments. He's a very funny man and probably has the driest sense of humor of anyone I know. He now lives in the retirement home for priests called Regina Clary, which he refers to as the seminary with wrinkles. Recently he has survived COVID-19 and is recuperating with his sister Jer in Jerry's home in, in the Shaw neighborhood of South St. Louis. Fifty years ago, this very day, he celebrated his first Mass here at St. Peter. I was his lector. I'm two years behind him in the seminary and in the priesthood. He is with us today, remembering that first day and first Mass in, as a priest right here at St. Peter Parish, 1970. This is, yesterday was his 50th anniversary as a priest serving the Archdiocese of St. Louis. As we say in the priesthood, when one celebrates a milestone like this in Latin, ad multos annos, which means for many years to come. So David, in the name of St. Peter Parish as its pastor now and your best friend, ad multos annos, many years to come to the priesthood and serve in the Archdiocese of St. Louis and welcome back home. To prepare ourselves to be with the Lord this morning in this very special day for Father and for all of us, let us call to mind our sins and we ask God's forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, bread from heaven, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, cup of salvation, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, source of nourishment and grace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the fast and terrible desert with its serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. Has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. A 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of my Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel from John is a continuation of Jesus' bread of life discourse, which took place shortly after the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. This morning's passage begins with a large crowd of Jewish people following Jesus because of that miracle. We know from scripture that Jesus was a kind and compassionate teacher who was concerned for both the spiritual and the physical welfare of his people. And throughout scripture, his miracles and signs demonstrated the power of God and the depth of his mercy. He knows that they were seeking more bread for their hunger. And so he tells them, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Well, as Jesus further explained to him that, as we heard in our first reading from Deuteronomy, that just as God gave the Israelites manna 
to sustain them in the desert. So now God has sent new manna to give them eternal life. He tells the crowd that he is the bread of life. And then when they eat his flesh and drink his blood, they will forever remain connected with him. Well, I can imagine the difficulty that the Jewish people had with these words of Jesus. And they quarrel among themselves, John's Gospel says, arguing that this man is not from heaven. He was born of Mary and Joseph and that he could not possibly give them his flesh to eat. Well, I imagine how difficult these words were to the Jewish people and perhaps to some of us today, but they are very important because they seek to show the intimate connection with Jesus and us in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. For years, every day and every Sunday, as a community of St. Peter Parish. We pray for one another, we hold each other up, we offer petitions for the common good here and locally and around the world. We share our joys and sufferings together. And when we gather at this beautiful table, this Eucharistic banquet table, we recognize Jesus through the eyes of our faith and pray always in gratitude for this incredible gift. Well, as we begin our preparations to receive the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, which is food for our spiritual journey, Father Greg will elevate the host and pronounce the words of Jesus. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is to be given up for you. Then lifting the chalice, Father Greg will say, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore the whole Christ, is truly, really, and substantially contained. The bread becomes his body, and the wine becomes his blood. Where either body or blood is, there is Christ, body and soul, blood, humanity, Christ-like divinity, Jesus didn't say, this is a symbol of my body and this is a symbol of my blood. Rather, he said, this is my body and this is my blood. This, my friends, is the doctrine of the real presence. In our Catholic Church, we are blessed. We have the forgiveness of sins and the sacrament of reconciliation. We have the gift of God's friendship. We have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who brings comfort to us in times of doubt and courage when we face fear and conflict like we are these days. We have the supreme act of sacrifice in the Holy Mass, the unbloody recreation of Calvary we have the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, and in his presence, Jesus remains mysteriously in our midst as the one who loved us and gave his life for our redemption. The Eucharist truly is a communal sacrifice, a celebration. Of course, we consume the body and blood of Christ in private, But the Eucharist is more than a public celebration. It commits us to recognize Jesus in the poor among us, to meet the most basic needs of our brothers and sisters who are hungry, who are thirsty, without a place to live, those who are imprisoned, those who are overcome by addiction, those suffering from despair, from loneliness, 
from racism and discrimination of every form. And as Christians, reaching out to those in need is not just a call to social justice. It is, in fact, a commandment. It's about giving to the poor and to the marginalized what is theirs as a sacred, God-given right. For 2,000 years, in times of crisis, in times of need, the Catholic Church has served those suffering the most. In this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, nothing has changed from our view of the church. I can tell you about Catholic charities where they set up a call center that is responding to hundreds of calls every day for help. Child Center Mary Grove, where they found themselves caring for 200 children every day who suddenly weren't going to school are participating in other fun, joyful activities. I can tell you about St. Patrick's Center, where they open up additional housing to help keep people off the streets, safe, cool, and well-fed. I can tell you about Regina Clary that Father Jack spoke about a minute ago, where so many of our priests became infected with COVID. And as you know, a a number of them have passed away. Many of us know some of the beloved priests. But instead of turning away in fear, skilled experts headed to their priest residence to care for these men who spent their lives caring for us. I include Father Dave Rout among those beautiful priests who cared for us. But this should not surprise us, really, because we are Catholic. We know that for 2,000 years we have approached those in need, regardless of their faith, their color, their culture, and I think we can all be proud of that. But this does take resources. And so today I'm asking you, if you are able to support the 2020 Annual Catholic Appeal, individuals and parishes, families, need our help, and we all want to be able to respond to their needs. Some of you may be thinking, and I would too, we're all hurting here. Some of us have lost our jobs. My small business isn't operating. I've had to take a 50% cut in my pay. Or I can't give anywhere near what I gave last year. Some of you might be asking, why have the appeal now? Why not wait till the fall? Why not skip it all together this year? I wondered that myself. But if you're unable to pay and you cannot give anywhere near what you gave last year, that's okay. If that's the situation and you've lost your income or are not in a position to donate, I simply ask for your prayers for the success of this year's appeal. And if you can give, I humbly ask for your support because it is desperately needed by so many people throughout the archdiocese. And if you're able, Again, I want to humbly ask you to give perhaps a bit more for fellow parishioners who are unable to participate in this year's appeal. I'm happy to tell you that over 240 of our St. Peter parishioners have already made a pledge. And I thank you for that. Your contributions have already made a big difference to those who are suffering from this pandemic. 
I wanted to mention to you that when you came in, obviously you saw no pledge card tables. We're not handling pledge cards this year. Everything is being done via online donations, which you can, you can see the information of that in our parish documentation, the flock notes on our website, or if you prefer, via the U.S. mail to the rectory. Our hope has always been in Jesus Christ and in his true presence in the Eucharist. And because we are Catholic, our church is already finding new ways to reach out and bring the Mass and the Word of God into our homes. Soon, our parishes will open up to even more people to be here in person. But for those who cannot, we include you in our deep prayers. We include you in our spiritual communion. We turn to the Blessed Mother as we do every year in times of crisis and now during this COVID and ask for her protection and help for the church in this time of desperate need. The appeal year after year is always dedicated to Mary and we know that she will help us serve. God bless you and thank you so much. Now let us profess our faith in the Lord with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten from through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in conformance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us present to the Lord our special prayers of petition. For the church, the body of Christ, <clears throat> that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice, which gives life to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For civic and community leaders, as they begin to discuss the balance between the need to enforce laws and the proper use of force, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who say, this is my body, to justify taking life by abortion, may learn to say, this is my body given for you, as Jesus did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A Respect Life focus for the month of June is on mental and physical disabilities, that we may be gratefully aware of the gifts and contributions people with disabilities share with our church and our wider community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our new Catholic Christians who received Holy Communion for the first time last week, that may always approach the body and blood of Christ as a great 
incredible gift, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with health issues and all who struggle with addictions, anxiety, and COVID-19, may God bring them healing of mind and body, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have completed their pilgrimage on earth, may the Lord bring them to life eternal with him and the communion of saints. This time we also ask favor for ourselves, the faith community of St. Peter, for, all, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you especially for the blessing of Father Dave and all his classmates celebrating their 50th anniversary as priests in the Archdiocese. May the Lord continue to bless us with good and wonderful priests like him and his friends. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I'd like to mention that this chalice, you notice it's not one of the ones we usually use. This is Father Dave's chalice that he's used over the many, many years, and he's brought it here for us today. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offering we here present. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper, with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come, the saving memory of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faith by this sacred mystery, 
you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly reality here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and with one without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make, make holy these gifts we have brought to you in consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit 
and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. The sacrifice of our reconciliation and prayer, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please, to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, the author of our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, if they are your own. Listen graciously to the family, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we who with this, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let's pray for all those who are with us, not in the church, but in spirit, joining in this Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the table. 
the sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Your fields will flower in peace for I the giver of home and harvest will send my rain on the soul come to the feast of heaven and earth come to the table of plenty God will provide for all that we need here at the table Let us pray. O 
Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and could we ask Father Dave to give a blessing to everyone here? Amen. And thank you for being here with us. The Mass is ended. You are sent out glorifying the Lord by your life.